Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. Welcome, everybody, to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Oh, I've got an incredible expert on hand analysis today. He really, I mean, this, you want to talk about passion. Are you, are you passionate about what you're about? This guy is one of the most passionate people I've ever seen about his subject. One of the most passionate, and he's extraordinarily knowledgeable, in my opinion. Okay. I'm sure he'll be like, well, uh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but he's extraordinarily knowledgeable. I could listen to him for hours and hours about hand analysis. Uh, so I'm just so grateful to have you here, Brent. It's going to be an amazing show today. I thank you, Daniel. And I think um, I really appreciate really what your position is about wanting to spread this type of information and spiritual information. Uh, there's just a craving for this in the world. And I really, really resonate with the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, likewise. So I want to go ahead and share with everybody a little bit about you. Brent is a master hand analyst from the International Institute of Hand Analysis. He's researched over 20,000 hands to help people understand their talents and work together. Hand analysis is a profound tool, of course, to help people people uh, understand their talents. I, I know it's helped me. I've definitely, I've definitely uh, have had these sorts of things uh, done for me. It has been used for people who are wanting to understand their spiritual calling and life purpose as well as now with corporations to recognize people's talents. I know you guys want to know more about your spiritual calling and life purpose, I'm sure. In this field, spiritual uh, Brent is a spiritual rock star. He has gained mastery not only of the blueprint of your life pattern seen in the hand, but actually how to change it. The outcome has been huge breakthroughs in people's lives as they've gone on top to be pop stars, closed these huge business deals, reinvented their life and healed lifelong relationship problems and helped people regain their vitality and strength using the code in their fingerprints and hands. Uh, last thing I wanna tell you about Brent, this is very fascinating to me. Brent spent 12 years traveling the globe, 12 years to find people who had a special talent so he can see what their hands reveal. He's just like, I got want to know the truth. I want to learn more. I got to know more about what's going on right? <laughs> to test the accuracy of hand analysis. He gave random handprints to the Institute of Hand Analysis to see if they could accurately guess the person's talents and what the interviewee revealed as his life purpose. He, the recorded answers of both the hand analysis and the interviewees matched one-to-one -one and were featured in his book, the power in your hands. He's been on TED Talks and done all kinds of other things. Uh, so again, it's just a great pleasure to have you here, uh, Brent. And uh, wow, just such a, you know, such a big, uh, there's such a volumes and volumes of information on hand analysis. Yeah, you're showing me like with chat, chat uh, GPT and all that, man, even that's like, it's Sorry, to start asking. <laughs> it's, it's a little scary at times, but I do feel like uh, it's a kind of a tangential subject, but I think AI is definitely here if you harness, harness properly can help us evolve, of course, ever more. Uh, so yeah, but it'll keep us on his toes, right? <laughs> you better, better stay on top of your stuff and take stuff to the next level now. Yeah, I wonder if with all the questions I'm giving chat GP, T, uh, if it's actually learning and making connections it wouldn't make because I was driving yeah. through it to see what you know certain fingerprint patterns have uh, gives uh, people a uh, a hit of serotonin and mm -hmm. others a, a hit of dopamine which is you know just oxytocin and 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 what this uh, what's interesting about this is that rather when you're surfing the web you're pulling from, you know, maybe trustworthy sources or Wikipedia, but chat GPT is restricted to only medical uh, journals and 
uh, we've got a whole lo uh, host of like the World Health Organization, Mayo Clinic, National Institute. And so I was just checking to see, okay, where is the next generation of AI around its knowledge around the fingerprints? And wow, it is, it, it is really good at being able to see based on, you know, the, these medical journals that have come out, even as, uh, like from the National Institute of Mental Health about post-traumatic stress disorder and fingerprints that happened in 2021. So it's pulling from a massive library that is just a dream from Healthline and the Mayo Clinic in order to give us the latest view of how your nervous system works with the hands and the fingerprints. And it's mind blowing. Even for me, I thought I, I was on the lead. I, I think I'm pretty much an authority in what the hand reveals is your life pattern. And I was up till two last night, just drinking this up going, okay, all right, this makes sense. This is my theory. And now there's a medical journal that's, that's been published about my theory. So I'm really happy about the chat GPT. I think it's going to be way stronger than Google. And at some point, we're going to be able to put our hands in uh, some scanning and you'll be able to see uh, all the different, you know, likelihood of, of diabetes, just like you saw in the movie Gattaca mm. from 15 years ago. Uh, and, you know, what your likelihood of, um, of stress that's been handed down biologically from your mother and your father, which is what I'm reading, you know, transgenerational trauma. Wow. Yeah. I know you're big with the, the area of, with trauma. So, so what do the hands reveal? I mean, that is, it's a big subject, the whole technology thing. And it, it is, it's amazing. I think, yeah, every innovation, right. People have always been scared of it. And yes, there usually are some drawbacks, but there's a, a ton of good things that can come from it. So, uh, and so Let's get into the subject with the hands. It's just a fun thing to kind of comment on, like <laughs> what's happening with the technology right now. Uh, so the hands can, what can our hands, let's go to the basics. What can the hands really reveal? Like there's a lot of, I think still there's plenty of people even listening into this show maybe uh, are like, well, that guy with the gypsies, they read your hand and fortune telling and all that sort of stuff. So we start with the basics. like. What is hand analysis really? I mean, what what is this? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not reading your future. I get that uh, not as often as I did when I first started this yeah, yeah. about 14 years ago, uh, because people are knowing from referrals about the what they're getting out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so hands are revealing the architecture of your personality, and particularly the sensory cortex of how your brain functions. And knowing that blueprint allows you to see patterns of behavior that result in life patterns, right? So traditional neglect around money, for example, is uh, seen in the hand. Uh, difficulties in marriage and close relationships are seen there. Uh, not feeling like you belong from the time that you entered your family, <laughs> And, you know, you can literally see that somebody was an orphan, you know, uh, from the fingerprint pattern. So how that's explained is that you grow biologically, obviously, th uh, through the, as a fetus, highly connected to the mother. And your hand is like tree rings. And you can literally see like, okay, at the first seven weeks, all we have is 400 million years of of your biology. We only have the most instinctual sides and that's in the palm of your hand. And certain people have more instinctive sides than others. And you can start to say, well, yeah, you're pretty instinctive and, and you really have a, uh, a very strong urge to think from your gut. And you have these three main lines in your hands and they show how they're, they're your operating system. Those three lines are formed with your three brains. You could I know you don't think you have three brains, but you can divide your brain into the three evolutionary cycles. And you have the, the lifeline that is formed before you can bend your hand. In fact, all of these are formed uh, before you can bend. And it shows how you are anchored in your body and how important your body is and your relationship to it. And you have 
also a headline that is formed when you have your frontal cortex. And you can see how a person thinks and how long they need, how much information they need to process before making a decision. And you can see how a person non-negotiable needs are in a relationship by the heart line, that's that top horizontal line. And if it's really big, then it's really, you know, they need a lot of connection and there's a whole library of information I can give you just on what your heart, heart line tells you about the type of relationship that you need and how that you can be misplaced and feel distant. And so what happens is, is that these, just those three lines, you can already see that creates a pattern, a pattern of relationships, a pattern of people that they are drawn to a pattern of occupations that they uh, seem to crave because some people really like a lot of information and other people don't. A lot of people are quick decision makers and, and or, or other people are very patient and contemplate. But the most important part of the hand is the fingerprints, the most important part, because they show something that is developed at around nine weeks when you develop the limbic system, the midbrain, where your pineal gland, I'm sure your listeners know about the pineal gland, and, and the amygdala, which is the, which is the part of the limbic system that's sitting on top of the pineal gland. And the way you can kind of view that is like a fuse. And that fuse is saying, hey, this is really meaningful, and I'm switched on, and I'm releasing all the happiness into my system. And that's what the pineal gland is doing. And if you, if that gets overactive, you know, you have melatonin and then you're asleep, right? So it's regulating your consciousness. And that building block of consciousness is developed at nine weeks and it goes to each finger. Mm. And it's something that the nervous system does because it's a system. It's not a bunch of random Indian wires, right? It's a, it's a complete system. And it's there you have a parasympathetic, which is the more relaxing, and then the sympathetic, which is the more go-getting side. The go-getting is on the index and thumb. There isn't a baby on the planet that's tried to open up a jar with their ring and pinky, right? So that's, that's the parasympathetic side, just to give you a sense of this. So your soul's coming in, and it's coming into life and it's going for the love of God, give me leadership power because I come from an entire family of leaders and visionaries. And then you have, it comes in and makes this big ball called a volar pad at the end of the index finger. And it's like a big ball, it looks like a gecko ball. And it stays for four months and eventually your hand outgrows that. And you have uh, a mirror of what the soul wants in that area. I love power. And I'm going to make everything in my life just about that and make it my life purpose to be somebody of a visionary, whether I like it or not. It just It's there. It's like, do you like Brussels sprouts or don't you? Right? It's the same mm -hmm. yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. And you have thousands of experiences that can be mapped in the hand. I'm just taking the index finger as the example, which is you direct for 400 million years, right? You point. And you were using body language way before you started using other language like English. So this is a, is a neurochemical biological system that shows what turns you on, what your soul wants. And so there's arguments. Okay, when does the soul enter the body? I say around nine weeks, because there is not much going on in the nervous system other than a house being built. And that seems to be the view of a lot of spiritual people, then you can't abort a baby after that. It's showing consciousness and increasing levels of that. And if you're a scientist, you would say, well, the building blocks of consciousness are introduced to an early nervous system with serotonin and dopamine, right? So that is potato, potato. It's the same thing. You're saying that you're really conscious and you really love this area. And if you don't like it, you're going to be unconscious of it and no ball at the end of it. Mm. And so this, as this goes for four months, eventually 
you can see that pattern. If it's a big ball, you got a circle on your index finger and you're saying, God, please make that my life. And if you don't have it, maybe you're anxious about it. You get a different pattern, like an upside down T, it's called a tenant arch. And you are traditionally anxious about that particular area. You're more analytical, strategic, more of a time base. Or maybe you have waves all over your fingers and that shows that you have a more cardiovascular response of a heart opening feeling toward that experience. So whatever the case is, you can start to really see how, since as you can imagine, when you're stuck in traffic and you're angry because you're late and you start telling a story and that emotion is somehow filtering that story of your life. In the same way, these fingerprints are showing your moods and they are inherited including your trauma about money, it's inherited. And they get passed down through an epigenetic pattern and the fetus is feeling that and saying, I don't like this whole money conversation. It's got, so you don't get much on your middle finger or maybe I don't like power. And maybe you're, and then you're in a power struggle your whole life, like Marshall Mathers or Eminem. So he gets a tenant arch in the index finger. So in this way, this is never going to change. This is your life blueprint. It's your pattern. And it's something that you're gifted with in some way because you have both the carrot and the stick of your life. What is going to always make you feel helpless and nervous and what is always going to make you feel turned on. However, however, you can break that pattern. Yeah. And that's been my life purpose because it, it became very evident with the work of the International Institute of Hand Analysis that after half a million hands, they know what they're doing. What my mission has been is, okay, great. I don't want to leave somebody crying in their hands after a hand analysis going, okay, this is your problem. I want to know how did you break through? So that became the focus, not only become a master hand analyst, but I was going around the world, not only just to find another butterfly in my butterfly collection, I was getting referrals of like, hey, you really got to do this clown. He is considered a histor historical uh, figure. And he's, he's like, hands down, giving the performance. He's a one man show, go check him out. Or uh, the shoemaker, like he, people line up for this shoemaker. So I wanted to understand what was going on there. And how they got to a place where they were in an exalted state. And that's been seen over and over by the theory that Richard Unger had seen. People come in like 10 years after hand reading and they're still talking about the same problem. Mm -hmm. Other people grew up. If you know Oprah Winfrey's story, that's a lot of growing up. She's not, she could have easily just said, okay, I got fired from the television show and that's it. Right. But she went on to start the O network and on and on because she felt that pain that you could see in her fingerprints and she rocked it. And so there's a way that you can do that and you can transform your life pattern so that you can end generations of transgenerational trauma and have a life that's exalted. So my book is to show how did people break through so that I can teach it to you. And it's not just one shoe fits all here it's it every fingerprint combination every hand shows a very unique story a very unique difficulty and also a very very precise path about how they're going to break through that you're not going to get reading about it and no taking joe dispenza and all those other classes that i see other people because i'm getting these clients all the time those aren't going to do it you're not going to be able to change a life biological pattern by meditating through it. You, it takes an incredible amount of courage to look straight at your life and be able to shift it. And that's what I'm doing for people. And as you said, you know, at the beginning, people are making huge breakthroughs with that. And yes, that's true. I've taken several people who had an artist like purpose and they went on to be pop stars. I've, taken people who have been dealing with a long-standing separation in their family for years. And when I located this as a biological pattern in their hands, 
they were able to recognize, oh God, it's me. And I can do something about it. And I have authority over my life. And that's a long conversation. So for two hours, I show you that pattern, right? I'm not going to break your pattern in two hours, but I'm going to show you that in right. a diagram of what your soul purpose is, what is your gifts, what are you here to learn, and how can you break through just in theory around it? And that should be already enough to get the show on the road for you. Right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, that's fascinating. I mean, just yeah, like we're in class, you know, and you're with Brent. It's like we're in class. We're taking notes. We're because it's not like other information where you know, most of us have heard a lot of different things, right? Okay, another spiritual teacher, another business coach, or whatever. Okay, we've heard some of these things already often. Here, it's like not as much so. You know, some people do know about hand analysis and some of these things, but. What I've seen with, within hand analysis, the little tiny bit I know about it is every one of you guys that do this, and you are a preeminent uh, authority, been recommended by someone else as a pretty big authority, in my opinion, it says you're the real deal. So here we are, uh, is that you all have your even, you know, like other things in life, like you have those specialized areas where you're, you particularly are even more keen and more you have more information or you're more focused on you know some people focus on the money some people focus on the seems like you focus a little bit more on the trauma right so everybody seems to focus in these different areas and there's so much stuff out there to to learn Brent like everybody could say well but deal with the hands ain't gonna deal what we do at, at Joe Dispenza though and you know like so it could, goes both ways it probably goes both ways to some degree, right? I can say my energy scan, ain't, you ain't going to find what I found my energy scan versus what you do with your hand. It's it's all good, but there's missing pieces. For me, when I got my hand analysis, which was not from you, so I know yours is different, right? Everybody's a little different. But the information I got, like, I have not forgotten. Like, it's been a constant compass for me. And it was just one reading. You know, I didn't I didn't do a course afterwards in my case, but... It's been a constant compass. Oh, I remembered. She told me this. She told me that. Oh, yeah. Can continue to go down this path. This is it's in your hands, right? There's something that's powerful about knowing on a physical level. It's right there. It's right there. It's staring right at you and what your potentials are, what your, you know, your sensitivities are, where you, you know you struggle, your life lessons and all that. So it's a it's a big, big subject. But it seems like from what I've been talking with you and everything is, you know, I know you have different areas of specialty, but it seems like the trauma aspect particularly speaks to you. I was kind of wondering why. And then if you could tell us more about, um, we can get deeper into uh, where people find it. Because that's, isn't that what's holding people back often in a way? Like, yeah, if they do their purpose, great, right? Like, now you know your purpose, great. Now go do it. Oh yeah, my trauma says no. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and that's that's so that's that's right. You really have two systems, right? You got you got the gas and the brakes. You have an autonomous nervous system that is the brakes, and it's there to keep you alive and survive. And as far back as Carl Jung, you've heard that there's this thing called a shadow side. The shadow side is an area of suppression. It's a part of you that may be conditioned in or inherited in. Eh? And what causes the suppression is fear and anxiety. There are events that when I look at somebody's life and I look at the things that are stressing them out, hmm, those areas are languaged in your nervous system through meaning and they say all right let's just go back to the money example since you have uh some great uh tools around the money area if somebody wants to make a big breakthrough with money they in the in the old palmistry text they would say you need to have a connection to saturn energy and if you don't come to saturn then saturn will come to you that's a uh, I, I'm not a palmist, okay, but it's a it's a good way that Aristotle was was showing these mythological energies that are running through the nervous system. It's poetic. 
I love it. You have these four gods just right above the hand, Jupiter, Saturn, Apollo, and Mercury. Mm-hmm. And those actually are valid representations of the hand. Now, somebody who has gone through a, a generation of World War II and they were taken, I'm in Switzerland, so they taken, they were maybe German and then they lost and they went through already poverty and now they lost and now they're really in poverty and maybe they were a high ranking general, maybe it had a circle on the right index finger like Richard Branson, but they went through an incredible amount of survival and strictness and insecurity and anything that you go through as a physiological experience starts to get embedded long term that's that's all this epigenetic programming and then you have a child in that and that child only knows that environment of insecurity and then they go through that over a period saying, hey, this is an area that as soon as I have money, I better spend it or, or I, on the reverse, I hold on to it. Mm-hmm. So we, after a while, you do anything for 28 days, it's going to become habit. What happens if you were to do it for 40 years saying we never have enough? We never have mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, you have a child and it's now... 2023 and you're in your 30s and you're still dealing with this feeling of anxiety that shows up every time that you have to pay your taxes and organize or ask for more money on an in, uh, or invoice your client it's the same thing it's just you change the shakespearean play with new actors mm-hmm. so what's happening there is that i can locate on your fingerprint what's making you anxious And based on the fingerprint type, I can see exactly, is it a fear response or is it an anxious response? And if you hold on to it, it has a, uh, if we take, for example, uh, tenant arches, you need a lot more serotonin in order to find balance. And if you don't have it, then you're going to have difficulty concentrating, difficulty with decision-making, increased irritability and impulsivity. So you have a gas tank that runs on serotonin. Another person with waves has a gas tank that runs on uh, oxytocin, right? So the foods that you eat, the experiences that you have are different for you than they are for your partner. And when those experiences are not met, you don't feel fulfilled. And likewise, when you're tank is empty on one of these neurotransmitters that we're able to see in the in the fingerprints you will start to recognize that i am making zero progress today in the area of money and that the one that is like the circuit breaker is the lowest ranking fingerprint and that's the one screwing everything up for everybody else on your hand mm-hmm. some people it's it's they i not heard and they just a very simple trigger and they're off to the races telling a story that I'm not heard. And, and then they don't speak up and it becomes this real imbalance in them. And holding on to that imbalance is holding on to a story of pain. And that every time you think of it, you're repeating the same amount of cortisol and, and difficulty of adrenaline. And after a while, that gets into your body and you start aging and in a more accelerated way. So if I can show how you're screwing up this thing and have you break through saying, look, just change this habit here. Mm -hmm. Just upgrade this behavior. If love is important for you based on the fact that you've got all these waves, these loops is what we call it all over your fingers. If love is important for you and you don't get it, then what you're going to have literally is a deficit of a certain thing you need to run on. Your Mm -hmm. whole system relies on it. Mm -hmm. And when you don't get it, really bad things start happening for you biologically. However, what I'm seeing, 
And this is why I believe that hand analysis is about to go through a big blow up like chat GPT. It's going to be huge because now what you can see from a simple hand analysis is that you have an appetite for certain experiences that are the neurotransmitters. And just like you're hungry for lasagna, you're going to be hungry for certain supplements that are going to make you go rocking. Mm -hmm. And when you have those supplements, plus knowing the experiences that you feel are fulfilling for you, and as well, how to compassionately break through that block, you go gangbusters and you end up having what I experience when I lead people through this journey. And I asked them, go live this vision of your life. And I say, you got 28 days, go for it and do it in the way I suggest, right? That you see, then what happens is they end up having, according to them, more fulfillment and more experiences in a month than they did for the last year. And the last neurologist that went through just completed getting a hand analysis. And then he went on to decide that, okay, I said, you can break this pattern, try it. And so he wanted to find out if, if it works. He said this was the equivalent of three years of psychotherapy and only three sessions. And the reason why is we're working directly with the nervous system and we're able to repeat the stressors just by talking about it with images, but in a very compassionate way. And as you know, through this process of trauma release, co-regulation and compassionate understanding, that's how you release the trauma. You really begin reprogramming a, lim a lifelong limiting pattern just by bringing presence to it and love and then creating a new vision of you with the, seeing the payoff of what would happen if you were to take action in that area. That's great. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. That's great. Well, I hadn't heard of it ever broken down quite like that. Like that you can, like the solution aspect. Usually it's like more my experience of it, the way I took it in. Again, I'm not saying like the teachers actually were saying this, but it's like, here's your life lesson. You need to deal with that. Um, here's your, and you got all your school, like are you in the school of love, the school of this, school of that uh you know the like informational and you know it's rather than like what, what seems different to me like just again and uh, what i'm hearing today anyway <clears throat> is that you actually have a way of taking the information and have people literally like do very specific actions that will change things for them now i did get some of that i remember <clears throat> it's kind of a little general, but it was like, yeah, yoga, tantra, you know, things like this that are going to be good for your nervous system and things like that. <clears throat> but it sounds like you really dialed in. <clears throat> what I'm wondering about is for people listening in, they're like, this sounds amazing. I, I, sign me up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds good. I'd love to, I would love to see myself to be able to get to the bottom of it, get it cleared and everything. Uh, one of the thoughts that came through my mind, so I'm wondering if other people listening are wondering about this. Okay, 28 days, let's go do these things. Uh, what if one of the, when we don't know what the things are, people freak out, right? Like, what are you going to ask me to do? Holy shit, you're going to tell me to get divorced? You're going to tell me I <laughs> got to quit my job? You're going to tell me, you know, so I'm wondering, like, what is, uh, like, can you give us some more examples of, like, you talked about the circles of love and all that sort of thing. So if people are looking on their hands right now, probably wondering, what do I got on my hands versus what he's saying, right? Mm. But once you discover these things, if you could just give us a little tiny slice of the pie, like when we see it, what kind of suggestions do you really give? Like, what do we actually do once we start identifying these things? And are they dramatic things that have to be done? Or are there more stepwise little little steps that make a huge difference and take you on with momentum in the right direction? Uh, yeah, uh, excellent. I love that. That's a great, great question. So uh, first off, when you get a hand analysis, what you're going to get present to is something that I don't have an agenda, right? So you're going to get present to yourself and you're going to realize that 
you're you have a limited amount of time on this earth and and there are certain experiences that are more fulfilling for you so i'm not a relationship breaker in fact i would say quite the opposite i've mended relationships that have been on the rocks for years and so the recommendation let's just take for example uh priya ragu right priya is another person who i said was uh has an artist life purpose i'll share my screen so you can just check her out right mm -hmm. uh and priya comes to me and she's she i met her at uh tedx when i was working in tedx and mm -hmm. She's just another person, the 250 people that are just coming through. And I'm just reading the hands because we had a big booth there. And, and, uh, and I'm showing her power. And I go, wow, you have a great power of artistry. And she was like, I know. I, I, I sing. I mm -hmm. go, well, what are you doing right now? And she's like, I'm working in the back office of Swiss Airlines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. It all happens to all of us. Right. We know we have that talent. But then, there, you know, there's life. There's circumstances. So. I look in and I go, you know what, what I see is a power struggle that you have in your hand. And you're going to have that power struggle that's going to kind of push away intimacy. And she goes, well, yeah, that's actually a deeper thing for me is that I never really saw myself as a pop star because I don't really identify with the feminine version of that. I'm, she, as you can see from the picture, she's a very, you know, like, she looks like she's going to bite your arm off with that face of hers. Mm -hmm. And that's typical, right? She's in this place called the shadows. That's a suppression. She's not having a great day. It's just a normal day, by the way, right? A great day, you just got back from Hawaii. But this is a normal day. She's just, yeah, life is okay. And this is just something that's an interesting thing that I'm doing today. Now, what I do in the hand analysis is I say, first, don't go taking action. First, really know your shadow side. When your shadow side, and that's a deeper process for people if they want to really go on and work with me to, in order to reform their pattern. But I, should, I tell you what your shadow side is in the, in the first. In her case, she becomes somebody who has an angry disposition and she pushes away people and it's, she's very detached and she goes through power struggles and, and detachment. So in the shift, it, we have to shift that, right? And how that's done is she then has to swallow that vomit for a while. She has to look at how much she's been angry and really take an account of that because she's a beautiful lady. Well, she doesn't recognize that a part of her life is maybe running 15% and she's outstanding, but the other you know, percentage of time, 85, is she's running into this chip on her shoulder. I want her to see it. And then I also want to see it from her grandparents and her and and, and the, the kids and see, where is this angry pattern of not enoughness? And sure enough, where's the angry pattern? Where's the warrior? Well, Tamil society in Sri, Sri Lanka went through a revolution and she's part of that. So she got really connected to that. Nothing wrong with it, by the way, just know it. That mm -hmm. you have to come from a whole lineage of fighters and you're mm -hmm. still doing it, but you're in Switzerland. Now connect to that anger and get angry. There's nothing wrong with it. Quit suppressing it in this passive aggressive way. Recognize with compassion how powerful anger is because um, anger is nothing more than your spirit that is suppressed. And when you can liberate this anger and express it in a compassionate way, you're mm -hmm. going to get your spirit back. And your spirit is a ghost game busters in manifestation in this world. So the request that I would give to her is now that you know that you have been holding on to anger and it's showing up all over the place and you're not a treat to be with, take some ownership of that. That's you. That's your trigger. And I can show you how you can shift that. So she just is with those emotions. She just be, she's just being with the emotions. And she's being particularly with anger, who she, which she has detached from. So her issue isn't her father though it, that's a great symbol, and it's not all the men. Her issue is 
in her nervous system, she has detached from a fundamental part of her own nervous system, anger. And I said, feel it like you don't like swallowing Brussels sprouts. And my mom made them every month, but you still eat them, eat it. Just mm -hmm. understand that on the other side of it, it's a transformative energy. I'm not making her into a jerk. I'm actually doing the opposite. I'm having her own it and connect to it. And when she does, that power starts to open the room. It feels like fire is coming in in the transformation like a phoenix. It's unbelievable when this happens, for particular this type. And every everybody shifts differently. Sometimes the, the room freezes. But in this case, it's like the, you're looking at years and years of karmic energy just coming out. And then, you know, this, this almost blue, green polarization energy comes out. And then out of that, she's reborn like a phoenix. And, and it's like, I look at her and I'm like, yeah, you can see from the picture, we've all got that girl. That's what she was after four hours. And in that place, go talk to your, in this beautiful feminine divine spirit itself, go talk to your father now and just tell him what you saw, that you've been holding on to anger and that you'd like to clear up and align your vision of what you want for your father. Don't complain. And then that place, she does. And the father is so proud of her that they had a conversation that a mom and a, 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 a daughter and a father should have had for years. Mm. He invests in her music. And in that place, she's so confident that I said, great, go do that now. Really, go do it. Don't quit your job yet. But you know, really get it out there. So she does. And literally, it's beautiful. Two weeks later, she's got it on YouTube, has 3000 people. And with the confidence that she now has with her father, she's now going through a new spiritual journey, a highly motivating spiritual journey, where she contacts a uh, record uh, label. And, and they said, Yeah, your music's great. What else can you do? And she goes, you can bring me on BBC. She's totally on fire. And I, I invite her to go for 28 days. And I say, look, I'm going to coach you. And then for 28 days, I'm going to say, go live your life. All right. And in that place, it's going to go gangbusters on you if you just follow this path. So she goes up and she tells her story that she explained to me in, in, the, in the shift. She's talking about transgenerational difficulties from the Tamil people. And BBC drinks that up. And so do 20 record labels. And she's got 20 record labels by the end of the 28 days. And, by the, and after that, three months later, she and her brother, who both went through this process, they take me out to lunch. And they said that they had just flown back from London and they had a crew of 15 people dr dressing them up and pimping them out. And they were interviewing the, their worldwide band. This is not a joke. And wow. now somebody sends me this photo of her on, as, a, as a poster for a, a perfume collection as a, an example of a, the most ideal independent feminine woman who's mm -hmm. got her spirit out. And this is on the downtown in the richest district of Zurich. And she's taking over the entire wall. That's six months. That person on the left who started, who was going to bite my arm off, has no chance of going and being that person. No chance until she is able to connect to her soul and get the mission that her soul wants to do. And now she's been all over the world. And this is just an example. I can tell you many, many examples of people who literally have gotten younger through this process, like literally lost 10 years of age or got out of their rut because they've been in a strong difficulty of being separate and alone and then able to break through and become a wine connoisseur. That's him 28 days later. And he's got a hundred people all paying a hundred dollars in order to, for him to talk about wine. And finally he gets his girl. Yeah. So mm. the, these processes are just allowing you to connect to your nervous system in a compassionate way and take that suppression that you've been suppressing maybe 85% of the time 
and opening that new territory up so that you're seeing life from that channel too, like she did. Her detachment from anger made it seem like she could not be with anyone else's anger. And so she was detached from life. Connect to her anger and her spirit comes out and she's got power in the world. Now you do this for on the money issue. You do this on the uh, shame issue, the abuse issue, the I can't start a family issue. I can't hold together a business. I can't be heard. I can't uh, connect emotionally. I can't get my message out. And I got historical examples from Einstein to John F. Kennedy to prove to you that you can evolve this. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's 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 unbelievable. I mean, she was she was nowhere doing doing her purpose to and no time flat, like totally like in six months. She's like everybody knows her like she's everywhere and she, She's totally rocking. Um, I'm assuming she was feeling fulfilled, more fulfilled, obviously, right? And happy. Mm -hmm. She's feeling light. Is she too stressed? Uh, you know, like I wonder about everything, right? I, I don't just look at like, wow, they're, they they made it made it big. Uh, I also look want to look at everything else. Like, is she more connected? Is she happier? Is she really? fulfilled you know completely like everything changed so i i can't just work on be the artist and talk to your dad right i have access to your entire nervous system map and i'm can tell i'm telling you that there are it's like i'm showing you the 80 percent you're not accessing and that may be a different technique for another person like it could be a very i don't say just throw yoga at it that's the problem there's a very specific yoga that is needed for each particular trauma some people store stress in their shoulders, some people in their neck, some people in their stomach, and the epigenetic pattern of stress is in the muscle tissues and fascia tissue that when you connect to it, you have to use certain techniques there, right? But others may be diet. Other people, it might be actually, have, for most people, it's actually having a crucial conversation and engaging, and that frees up kind of like when you finally clear something up with a friend. And how relieving that is. Remember those days, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that that is a neurological process that's undervalued. In the same way that you look at somebody who knows they got to go to the gym, but they're not doing it. And they know that's going to be amazing when they do, but they aren't going to do it, right? They got too much of a payoff being in their shadow. So they're right. neglecting their body sitting at a desk for you know 70 hours and their their body posture and all their processes are just going stay at a desk how meaningful is it going to be so i got to work on all the whole system and in her case yes she was uh she, her vision board included um not some california law of attraction come on stack a cash on a table and just try to mirror that frequency no it was an absolute activity list of what she's going to do when and mm -hmm. what is she going to do in the area of well-being What's she going to do with her community and give back to the community and her friends? Mm -hmm. What is she going to do in the romantic department? What is she going to do? At, what is she going to learn? And how is she going to grow her business with all the different ideas? Mm -hmm. and that, that person is highly motivating to have other people participate in that vision. So it's not her vision. Mm -hmm. It's her life. And mm -hmm. she's enrolling people into that life, a little landmark education, if you guys have rec recognized that. But that was a proper tool that Landmark used for many, many years to try to create movements. And I recognized that tool. And I'm saying, yeah, do that. Keep doing that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And create a strong movement in your life and own yourself and your life that you're not just this person wearing the clothes. You're everybody around you. And you are the collection of all these people. Go engage. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's an, again, the tuned in guy, energy scanner. We, oh my God. Yeah, we're all interwoven. So <laughs> 1 million percent. Yeah. Wow. This is really amazing. I mean, I don't, uh, to, to be able to work with people this way, because you know what came through to me? And I know like this is where your help really makes it land and lets it happen is it was really coming through for me like just tuning in for myself of like okay let's say 
I was working with you, like, what do I imagine might come through? Like, I don't know, but I just kind of was like, well, maybe all of a sudden I'd be like, let me go finally get out there and start speaking live with people like I've been imagining or whatever it is, you know, like those, those images, like, that's what I want to do. Oh, don't do it though. You might be away from your family and you can't, you can't break that, you know, can't break that up. You, know, you might get lost in it. Your ego may blow up too much, you know? So there'll be all the reasons, all the reasons why. Yeah, that's why you have to do it all at the same time. So that in the vision board, you have to show all of it so that you can reconcile that problem. That's really important because a lot of people are like, yeah, uh, I was working with a, a millionaire that just uh, this last month who's like wanting to be a billionaire, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got like all his planes is going to do and all this. But then I was like, yeah, and you're not going to sleep at all, right? <laughs> right. Uh, you need to organize this and this can't compromise this area. So try yeah. to try to make this area non-compromisable and see what you can yeah. do yeah. to fill in the rest of the time and don't don't cash in your body for that dream and that creep that puts him in the center of his nervous system and everybody's center is slightly different based on their fingerprint pattern but once you once i show you where the center is then you can start to see hey there's a balance act that is really fulfilling and my wife might actually like the inspirational speaker right right Right, exactly. Yeah. Or I might say, uh, for an example, like everybody's got their different things. For me, I can lay on persuasion and be persuasive. Persuasion is good, but then part of me, even part of me, even though I've really embraced it at times in my life and in my business, it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, some people think you're slick then, and sometimes co people compliment you on that, but then they turn around and they're basically judging you. Oh, maybe I'm too slick, you know, and like, but it, it, maybe that's one of my superpowers. Who knows, right? So it's like these different aspects of ourselves that we're suppressing. Yeah, I mean, we have to find a way to, uh, you, it sounds like what you are doing is you've got this way of being like, no more suppression, let's full out, like, you know, like, that's what I loved about it, it's like, no, just 28 days, full out, you'll be a whole new person, you know, like, that's how it sounds anyway. Yeah, that just you have to understand, and I'm guessing that with your persuasion, you have a marker on your pinky, right? You have like a, a some kind of uh, 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 a high ranking fingerprint or maybe a marker that's underneath that mm -hmm. and what you need to understand is your message that you have is a combination of that which mm -hmm. is what you what fulfills you and everything else that you're suppressing right mm -hmm. so people get that they get from the beginning your message of what you're suppressing mm -hmm. and if i can show you how that can open up then you're going to go gangbusters, right? Some people don't have any, it's meaningless, these areas that I'm telling you to open up because there's more filled with anxiety and trauma. Right, and exactly. Yeah, I got to reel that back. I'm not taking a chance, right? No way. It's right. too much to risk. I get it. So it's, I, I'm watching the time and I did promise that we're going to try to keep this right on time. I would love for you to tell people, because we could we could definitely have you back at some point for sure, but I'd love for you to go ahead and, uh, who knows, if I get my own reading, I would do a before and after for the show, right? That'd be amazing. So I would love for you to go ahead and share with everybody uh, how they can reach out with you if they want to work with you or learn more about you. Sure. Uh, so uh, go to thepowerinyourhands.com and you can see uh, uh, me and a video and you can click a button that says sign up for a two-hour hand analysis or a partner or your family. Uh, and uh, I have created for uh, a promo for this because I love, this is an audience that I'm wanting. I'm working with so many other people, but this, the spiritual audience really resonates for this. So if you're listening, please write this down. It's spiritual rock star, all one word. And if you enter that, uh, you'll, when you go in, you, you click the button and you'll see uh, a, uh, uh, a calendar. And so you just, you would, you just choose the time and then you'll see a promo code and you enter your information, you enter spiritual rock star. So 
and then you, you know, pay with your credit card and you're off to the races, you'll get an email with instructions on how to put, uh, send photos of your hands in the sunlight. And I need to see your fingers and your thumb separately and then the full hand, because I, I have a different uh, language for each of your fingers. And I need to show that to you. And then um, for those guys that still were like, well, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, then just go to a webinar. I give them all the time. So you can contact me. And every Friday I give, or we're, we're all, almost on every Friday. I think we're at one sort every week or once every couple of weeks, I'm giving an informational webinar to actually showcase the examples and I'm reading people's hands. So you can uh, just reach out to me. Uh, here's my phone number. Just put this on your WhatsApp, um, country code 4176-571-7735. It's Switzerland, but on WhatsApp, it's free, right? So country code 4176-571-7735. And I'm happy to answer your questions and then just invite you and then you can just check it out and just go, hmm, this is, this is, I'll show you real, real examples. That's so awesome. And just so people know, I, I love that. What's up? Uh, I think you mean what's, what's up? Just so people are clear, like, what's this, what's up thing? <laughs> so uh, yeah, just go on WhatsApp and you can put in those numbers. And if you uh, didn't catch it the first time, maybe run it back. Uh, we may not, you know, necessarily put it into the notes. Uh, we'll sure. see. That's one of those more private things, but you could, you know, with AI now they grab everything anyway, but <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, no, take advantage of that. You're going to get a discount, you know, on the, the, the reading and um, I'm definitely interested myself. So like I said, we may do a before and after show or something because that would be great. Actually, that would be really cool because you will see a physiological change. That's my guarantee for all the people that go through this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of hard not to. So if you just take the neurologist, I'll give you an example this before and after we just to leave. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a woman who this is before, right? Mm -hmm. And she's a lawyer. And mm -hmm. then this is after, and she is, it's not just makeup and everything. Right. There's a whole, it's right, she's right. Going through a depressive phase. And now she's biologically a new person, confident. Yeah. And that woman goes and talks to her mom who wasn't in an awesome space either. But mm -hmm. then she, because she shows up like that woman, she mm -hmm. shifts her mom and becomes this beautiful example, right? Mm -hmm. So- in the, the neurologist, uh, let's say Dr. Urs Pullman, uh, he's a smart guy, right? And he's working in a, as an entrepreneur as well as a neurologist. He's trying to sell these, these, uh, these lotions to these hotels and that are you know, premium hotels. But now look at him, all right? That the issue around the hotel was an issue ultimately with his kids and an issue within his that he was he couldn't confront mm -hmm. and he had a lot of power struggles with people and egos and it was just re, uh, replacing the characters so if i can show you your relationship to the power mm -hmm. and then be able to negotiate from this guy on the right mm -hmm. that guy is the one who closed a four hundred thousand dollar deal mm -hmm. one on the left is still trying to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders and can't figure this out. Yeah, to figure it out, he's got his hand up. Yeah. Well, when you take the before pictures, do you tell them to do it in a certain way with that picture, or how, where do they grab that picture from? They they submit. You know, when you do your hand analysis, I want you to just take a photo of your face today, and I don't. They, I don't you don't even tell them how to do it. They they just show you a picture, and that's how they're looking. Yeah, they're, they're they're not in any way not not told to, uh, to smile or not smile or anything. They just yeah, take a picture and send me your hand, and uh, yeah, that's very interesting because otherwise people might think it's all staged, right? Like, oh, okay, they, they, you told them to frown or <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You have to. I I understand that, and I and, and it's a reasonable thing. But just look at these people that yeah. um, for women, I decided to do a butterfly collection just to see if I have every type of hand type. Right. Mm -hmm. This is this is a doctor online mm -hmm. here. Right. And you can see it's she's amazing. giving me her best here, but that's yeah. not this woman. Right, right. Right. You can see the change all the same. Right. Look yeah. Totally. Femininity. Right. Yeah. Look at 
look at uh, uh, this woman. She's already a know-it-all in the coaching business. And I get a lot of life coaches. I get that. Yeah, that's very clear there. Yep. Right. And now in fairness, she looks like she's got a very nice photo there. But yeah, look at the I, I, I can see it because I'm an energy reader. I'm like, yep, that, that picture, she's the know-it-all here. She's in a whole different space. Yep. Here, I don't know what to do with my boyfriend. Should I drop him or not? You know, he, I love him, but he's not committing. Here, I'm happy He's if he's not committing, I'm moving on or right, not. Exactly. I'm going to get yeah, that. Take, so, take it or leave it. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so, so all these people um, it, are getting new lives out of this deal yeah. because it's kind of like, imagine when you got back from Hawaii after two weeks and you come back to your desk and you end up doing way more like two weeks of work mm -hmm. at, in your desk after being away for two weeks and you just see that your life kind of is more fulfilling and you, you organize calls in a different way and so forth that you just move in a much more uh, deeper manner because mm -hmm. of who you are being and that is what creates these these transformations yeah. and it, you you change who you are and you're going to have a, a life that mirrors that for sure. Right. right. Well, we need to bring the show to a close, but I definitely everybody uh, uh, jump on it. Uh, if you're <laughs> if you're ready to rock, as we always say here with everything, if you're ready to rock, jump on this opportunity. Uh, I know that I'm very likely to. Uh, I definitely would just uh, touch base with with him real quick and then see about uh, jumping on this. It sounds uh, uh, totally amazing. And you know, I really think, and the thing that's really impresses me about Brent as we close is he is he is totally hard of service. He's not like, man, let's do this hand and now let's see how much money I can make off of this thing. Like that's not the driver. Of course, we all would love to thrive and prosper and have more money, but he's just generally wants to learn as much as possible. He generally wants to help as much as possible. He generally is about the mission and the purpose. That's why he's on spiritual rock star and right? So I break I'm people through. Grateful. That's my yeah. thing. That's yeah. I'm yeah. So I'm so grateful for you, Brent. Um, it's just uh, phenomenal. The work you're doing is uh, unbelievable. And yet it is totally believable. <laughs> so thank you for sharing everything today and being a guest on the show today. Thank you very much. And thanks for the excellent questions. All right. And then for the rest of you, uh, the listeners, thank you for listening in and keep on tuning in. We'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. The so next time, everyone. The Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.